In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the characteristic of ellipses. So first of all, let's remember that foci live on the major axis. So I'm going to first of all take half of the distance of the sum from F1 to P and F2 to P, and I'm going to call that distance A. If you notice from our diagram here that that distance is exactly the same as from the center of our ellipse to the end point of our major axis. This means that the sum of F1 to P plus F2 to P equals twice that amount. If you notice here in orange, that's equivalent to the whole length of the major axis. Now going back, if I take a look at the distance from the center to the end point of the major axis, that distance is A. So I'm just going to rotate it quickly up and I'm going to slide that same segment over. And what do you know? It is exactly the distance between the end point of the minor axis and one of our focal points. So in my diagram now, I'm going to label the focal distance C, and I'm going to label half of the minor axis B. And if you notice from this that the Pythagorean theorem will hold, B squared plus C squared equals A squared. Now the question then is, is how does it relate to my ellipse equation? So for our particular ellipse, the equation would be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. The reason that our a value is underneath the x in our equation is that this particular ellipse is elongated horizontally. If it was a vertically oriented ellipse, then the a's and the b's would end up being switched such that the a would be underneath the y value and the b would be underneath the x value. But hey, wait a minute. What if it was the difference of the distances to the folks that I, that was a constant amount? In one of our follow-up videos, we will explore these questions. What happens when the difference of the amount of the distances to the foci is a constant? What cool, interesting things occur when that happens? And how also did we arrive at the equation for an ellipse?